course, a major factor here, the temperature in the mid-50s. But as you can see, a raindrop is worth a thousand words, and the pictures tell the story. This is Charlie Jones, along with Randy Cross, on a rainy Sunday afternoon, and already the weather has taken its toll. It really has, Charlie. O'Neill O'Donnell is going to make a first start here today. Has been out with that bad shoulder. I talked to him earlier, said, I'm going out. I'm going to get the footing down. I'm going to see what it feels like, how I throw in the rain. Can I slip in the rain? Earlier, here's what happened during warm-up. He's being taken off the field. And for more on that, right now, let's go down to Len Berman. Well, thank you, Randy. He was throwing a warm-up toss in the far end zone. He turned around, looked back. He thought somebody had thrown something at his leg. Nobody had. He had pulled out his right calf muscle. He is out of action. Neil O'Donnell will not play today. Charlie? All right, thank you for the report, Lynn. Now, what does this do to the New York Jets? Well, you know, Charlie, coming into the game, the quarterbacks really weren't going to be the key in this kind of a crummy game. It was going to be the <laughs> running backs. And for the Jets, it's a thousand yard rusher, Adrian Morrell. Mm -hmm. And for the Houston Oilers, what about their situation in the rain? They, they still have a shot at a wild card spot. Well, they do, and they're starting uh, Steve McNair for only the fourth time in his career. But they've got a rookie running back in Eddie George that's a big guy. It's as good as anybody in the league. And both these running backs, two hands on the ball. If you got one hand on the ball, you should be shot. <laughs> All right, well, we have bad weather, but we will have an NFL game. Stay with us this afternoon. The Jets and the Oilers right now back across the river to Greg Gumbel at NBC. Hi, everyone. Welcome. Let's get you caught up on the early scores today, We're beginning with the game in Indianapolis for the second time this season. The Bills and the Colts have gone to overtime. This time, they are tied at 10. In the first game, Buffalo won at 16-13 in OT. They are just starting the overtime session at the Dome in Indy. In Baltimore, the Ravens riding rough shot over the Steelers today. 31-17 is the score. Heavy rain. Steelers could have wrapped up a division title with a win and a Houston loss. Not going to happen today. 10-7 pit second quarter. Vinny Testaverde, plenty of time, finds wide receiver Derek Alexander for a 24-yard touchdown. Having a good day, Vinny Testaverde. 10 of 16, 203 yards and two touchdowns in the first half alone. 31-17 is the score there. In Green Bay, the Packers knock off the Bears. 28-17 the final. Desmond Howard for Green Bay takes the punt at his own 25. Special teams unit opens a big hole on the right side, and Howard is gone. 75 yards for a touchdown, his second of the season. Pack led 14-7 at that point. They got Freeman, the wide receiver, back today. He caught 10 passes for 156 yards. In Philadelphia, the Eagles break a three-game losing streak and eliminate the Giants 24 to nothing. The Vikings win 41-17. They snap Arizona's three-game win streak. In Carolina, the Panthers have won four straight. They eliminate Tampa Bay from any playoff possibilities. 24 to nothing the final score. And in Jacksonville, the Jaguars are leading the Cincinnati Bengals 30 to 27. We'll send you to the kickoff. Just I realized that he had started the last six games when O'Donnell was out. Uh, his numbers were up and down, not that impressive most of the time. A lot of turnovers, a lot of interceptions. But Randy, a different situation for him this week. He has absolutely no pressure. He didn't take any reps. Neil O'Donnell was the one getting ready. So the, all of the pressure is off him. I predict he will have the best game that he has had this year. Charlie, very important for him. You know, if I'm Ron Earhart and, and Rich Kotite, I have him concentrating more just on the snap. He hasn't taken many snaps this week. He definitely hasn't taken snaps in weather like this in a while. So the exchange between he and Roger Duffy, especially early, is what I'd concentrate on. The Jets won the toss. They'll be receiving Al Del Greco is going to kick it away for Houston. And Reggie Cobb is the deep back. The ball blows off of the tee for the second time. Now, you know that it is raining. I mean, that has been very obvious. But the other thing that you may not realize is that most of this area is also under a wind warning. We are expecting wind gusts above 50 miles an hour this afternoon. Now, does the stadium protect, the, protect you from the wind? Not in reality, because what it does, the stadium will capture the wind and make it swirling gusts here inside of the wind, so it can pose all kinds of problems, not only for the kickers, but also for the quarterbacks and the ball carriers, the officials. Interesting when they throw a flag to see if it comes down near where the infraction <laughs> took place. Steve Jackson is going to hold on the kickoff for the Houston Oilers, and in the rain we are underway. He's going to be taken by the up back, Alex Van Dyke, and he spins his way to the 25-yard line. And now Frank Reich is going to come out with his offense. Not in that big of a hurry to get going in this weather. And here's that offensive line. Yeah, Charlie, we talked about it a lot. This offensive line, especially the tackles, Elliott and Williams have done a great job run blocking for this Jets offense. Backs and receivers. 
Well, Adrian Morrell is great. Frank Reich is there. Keyshawn Johnson this week complaining a lot. I got to get the ball early. I lose interest if you don't. Let's watch Keyshawn early. And there is Keyshawn, number 19. He's in the slot on the near side. As expected, we will see a lot of Adrian Morrell. Anthony Cook of the Oilers makes a stop, and let's look at that Oilers defense. And they are known for their defense. I don't know if they'll stunt as much in this weather, Randy, though, as they have in the past. Oh, they will stunt. They will blitz. They'll slide around like everybody else is going to today. But they will attack, and the basis of it is this defensive line that hits the gaps because they know that these linebackers and these defensive backs can run around. Raphael Robinson's a change in there. He, stay, he starts for Blaine Bishop. Gain of a yard on the play. It's going to be second down and nine as Keyshawn comes across in motion. And here's Morrell again this time on the right side. He's going to go out to the 30-yard line. They'll mark his progress for three yards. So it's going to be third down and six, and now Reich will have to throw. And they'll bring in extra wide receivers. Well, yeah, Frank Reich and the Jets quarterback, it's hard to say you really have an advantage when the ball's just soaking wet and the wind's blowing, Charlie, but, you know, as you know from doing as many games as you have here, these quarterbacks locally know the wind. They know which direction they can throw in and which ball, way the ball's going to go once they throw it. So you don't really lead it. You throw it into the wind and let the wind take it. And they show five wide receivers and the shotgun. The order is showing a three now, a four-man rush coming from the outside. Pass comes back over the middle and is complete for the first down to Richie Anderson. And the ball moves out to the 45-yard line, a gain of 15. Lee Cole, the rookie free agent from Arizona State, activated only yesterday, makes the tackle. And that, what they get here, the Jets do, is they get a matchup they want in Anderson on Lee Cole. You know the guy couldn't have spent too much time, practice time, working against four or five receivers as the Jets have showed on occasion. And that's a case where you get a running back making a quick break for Richie Kotite's offense. And when we talked with Jeff Fisher yesterday, head coach of the Oilers, this was one of the things he was concerned about when the Jets go to four or five. There's the bad snap. One of the things the Jets are concerned about, Adrian Morrell down at the 25-yard line. Right about now, he'd like to give that uh, negative yardage to Frank Wright. And that's exactly what I talked about earlier, Charlie. It's that exchange between the center, Duffy, and Frank Reich. Where's the ball come up? Where's it go? See that? It was almost like a shotgun snap. If you notice that ball, see it rolling around how wet it is? It was that wet before Duffy snapped it. That ball came right out of the center's hands. And also remember that the officials will change the ball. They have a, at least half a dozen that are working all the time with another dozen or so ready to go, and they're tallying them off and bringing them out. They're trying to keep the ball as dry as they possibly can. Charlie, I, I played center quite a bit in this league. It doesn't matter. <laughs> and if you don't have huge hands, it is a factor. Here's Adrian Morrell out across the 30 to the 33-yard line. He's going to pick up about eight yards on the play. And it's still third down almost forever as Baron Wortham makes the tackle. So we third down and 22 to make it official. And the real challenge when you're facing a defense like Jeff Fisher runs in Houston is keeping track of your responsibilities blocking-wise. We saw the Jets come out in four and five wides. Well, don't be fooled by the fact that if they're in four and five wides, that means Jeff Fisher won't call a blitz out of the slot. You know, it's one of the things he studied under Buddy Ryan, first in Chicago, then in Philadelphia. They love to blitz, especially where you don't expect it from. It's usually the backside. Now with four wide receivers and a man back to block or to cover, and it is Anderson on the short pass. Basically, they're going with the middle screen. Ball pops loose. Was it down? No, they're going to say it was down. They're going to mark it down the 34-yard line. It'll be fourth down, and the Jets will be kicking it away. Robert Young is the man who made the play for the Oilers and knocked the ball loose as it came down. But well, what you have to watch for here is, one, the good job the defensive line does. Two, is this ball out? He's down, and it's out. Great call. The ball came out after he was down, but it was a nice job by that Oilers defense. They weren't buying anything about a drop back pass. They were playing screen the whole way. Ryan Hansen with a four-man rush by the Oilers. Not that good a kick. Takes a jet bounce. Mel Gray kind of faked at it, and then he steps back. It'll be down to the 29-yard line. Down by... Fred Baxter, not that bad a kick for the Jets as the Oilers move on offense for the first time. Led by Steve McNair, number one draft choice a year ago. Here's his offensive line. 
Well, the highlights there, obviously, Matthews and Stepnoski. Guys have been to the Pro Bowl, been all pro. they got to protect this young quarterback today. Backs and receiver. Uh, this Eddie George is very, very impressive. Big kid, 6'3", 230. Frank Wycheck was a blocker in Washington. Now he's a factor catching the ball from the H-back position. You mentioned size of hands so important. When we talked with Eddie George, he has huge hands. He will be invaluable this afternoon in the rain and the wind here at the Meadowlands. He come out throwing. So McNair rolls out left a little high for Chris Sanders, and I think one of the things they're going to do is this. Let him throw. Let's not wait around, because he's going to have to throw sometime in the rain, and here's what he'd be throwing against. The Jets front four. Well, the front four, Marvin Washington and Hugh Douglas have got to put pressure on him, especially going in this direction. He's with the wind offensively, and the defense knows it. Linebackers and secondary. Marcus Coleman's been a highlight the last three or four weeks for the Jets, and he's getting a chance to show it starting at right corner. Sanders comes wide to the near side. Running backs are split. Eddie George now the tailback. With Wycheck the ace back and the lead blocker. He slips just a bit. Pops his way through the hole. And has about eight yards. Maybe not. Eddie George. Gary Jones makes the tackle as we take a look at the number one draft choice from Ohio State for the Houston Oilers. A young man who becomes, interestingly enough, only the 32nd rookie in NFL history dating back to 1934. There you see him as he spots through to gain more than 1,000 yards. And as you were talking about it early, Randy, he did it the old-fashioned way. Well, you do it in 12 games, and that's when you really have to talk about the talent that he has. But more importantly, he's got a strong veteran offensive line in front of him. Third down and one. Little quarterback sneak by Steve McNair. He, they list him at 6'2", 224. I have a feeling he's a little taller and a little heavier than that. Remember what Jeff Fisher told us yesterday? That he I mean, just, may just open with a quarterback sneak uh, well, yeah. before the race. Well, he is such a great athlete running with the ball. I mean, the most important thing for Jeff Fisher and his coordinator, Jerry Rome, to do with McNair is really to sort of rein back that, that great ability he has until he's completely comfortable in the offense. I tell you, when they turn this guy loose, he is going to be an absolute tear to defenses in this league. In case you're just joining us, we have no score in the rain between the Houston Oilers. And we're going to have a bit of slip and slide, as you see here, by Eddie George right along the line of scrimmage. Marvin Washington was there to cover him. We have 8.54 time remaining in the rain first quarter, and the count continues. Hey, remember, too, for uh, McNair, this is only his fourth start. And last week, he came in when Chris Chandler was hurt, uh, and he fumbled a ball on an exchange, just a clean fumble on the ball. Sam Mills for the Carolina Panthers picked that ball up and returned it for a touchdown. So uh, even without the wet ball, he's had a problem with the exchange. Second down and nine. Eddie George, the remaining back, three wide receivers. And they show motion coming across the top. That's Ronnie Harmon. And Harmon has the reception. The perfect third down back. He does not like to be known as that, but that is the role that he has drawn in San Diego now in Houston. And Marcus Coleman getting the start for the rookie on the right corner makes the tackle. Uh, you know, actually, I talked to Neil O'Donnell before the game. I said, Neil, what's this weather mean? He goes, well, it means McNair throws about 15 balls to Ronnie Harmon, dumping them out of the backfield and letting them run. And I do about the same thing with my guys. And that's so far as what McNair and this offense are trying to do is going to the short pass. This is not a day to try to do anything down the field. And Jim Vaccarelli, the defensive coordinator, knows that if you're going to take a shot, you better not miss those short tackles because there won't be anybody behind your defender. Derek Russell comes across, starts in motion, kind of holds up, comes over the middle, finds an open spot, and he receives the pass from Air McNair at the 40-yard line of the Jets. 13 yards as they convert. Uh, third down opportunity, Victor Green with the tackle. And, and a nice pass by McNair because he was presented Russell's body. Russell ran with his body turned. He saw the numbers the whole way and put it right on the 8 and the 5. So spot the ball at the New York Jets 40-yard line. And we want to welcome those of you who have been watching the Buffalo Indianapolis games. In overtime, it is Indy 13, Buffalo 10. The card that I was just handed is now at the 40-yard line. The give is to Eddie George. He is awesome, isn't he, Randy? Oh, he really is. I mean, this guy can run, and he runs very upright, and he runs quickly. Again, 
that final, Indianapolis defeating Buffalo. The Colts record is seven and six. Buffalo goes to nine and four, and it's in overtime. So does that hurt the Oilers' opportunities with Indianapolis? They're also scrambling. You know, as everybody, there's about four or five teams that are on the bubble for that last spot as a wild card. It's the important formula at this time of the year. If you're in six, seven wins, don't lose. You're in the playoffs. And here is Eddie George, a couple of stiff arms, has the corner. Nice, strange move, sliding down the line and pushing the Jet defenders away. Yeah, not only the strength, Charlie, but we, you know, we always tend to forget with guys like Eddie George and Chris Warren with the Seattle Seahawks, how quickly these guys are moving when they're just sort of gliding and sliding. Look at that straight arm. That's on Marvin Jones, an inside linebacker. Then he steps over to the defender trying to tackle him. And you, you just saw a little bit of a highlight of everything Eddie George can do. A little speed, a little strength, and a little glide. Eddie George, by the way, has rushed for 22 yards already in the ball game, slipping and sliding in four carries. And it's a first down. And here is George again. As the corner lowers his head, and he's taken out at the 25-yard line by Gary Jones. Now for an update, let's go to New York City. Charlie, you were just talking about it. Here's how it came to an end in Indianapolis. Kerry Blanchard from 49 yards out at 6.46 of overtime. And the Indianapolis Colts keep their playoff hopes alive. 13-10, the final over the Bills, Charlie. Thank you, Greg. And you, as you can see on the screen, moving on the five-minute mark, time remaining, first quarter, and we have no score here. Uh, I think the Colts caught a break in that game. They just showed, Charlie, no Kelly, no Thomas, and for the third game, no Bryce Pop. And the Oilers once again going to Eddie George. No question that he, we already know he's going to be the workhorse this afternoon for Houston. Bobby Hamilton with the tackle for the New York Jets. Well, there's two things today that are going to get worn out. It's the bottom of Eddie George's feet and the forehead on the helmet of Frank Wycheck, the H-back, who's basically the lead back. I mean, this guy might need a new face mask by the end of the game because all they're going to do is lead him through the line in front of Eddie George. This is the first offensive drive of the ball game for the Houston Oilers, led by Steve McNair and their tailback, Eddie George. And it's third down and five. Little play action fake. Comes back to this side to White Chicken. Nice outside in move inside the tent. Is he inbounds to score? Yes, he is for the touchdown. Frank White scoring his fifth touchdown of the season from 23 yards away. Charlie, Gary Jones for the New York Jets, a great hitter, normally a very good tackler, has a shot at Wycheck to sh stop this thing just for a first down. Watch. I mean, you can't tell me that a defensive backs breaks aren't as good as a guy like Wycheck. Wycheck's about 250, 260, but uh, he makes a safety look pretty bad with his own little stop and go move. So with 4.13 left to go in the first, Al Del Greco out of the hole to Reggie Roby will attempt the extra point. And he has got it as he tacks one more on for the Oilers and they move up 7-0 on top of the New York Jets. And Randy, the reaction of Steve McNair. Well, talk about a confidence booster in the way that Jeff Fisher wants his quarterback to start. NBC is brought to you by Coca-Cola Classic. Always the real thing. Always Coca-Cola. By Pontiac and your local Pontiac dealer. We are driving excitement. By Visa, the preferred card of the NFL. It's everywhere you want to be. And by Brewery Fresh Budweiser, who remind you, fresh beer tastes better. Thus far, it is not raining on the parade of the Houston Oilers as they moved on top of the New York Jets by a score of 7 to nothing. As they capped a 71-yard drive in 11 plays. Because of the swirling winds means that once again Steve Jackson will be holding on the kickoff. And Al Del Greco will kick it away with Reggie Cobb, the deep back for the Jets, and Alex Van Dyke is the up back. Pretty good kick. He does have the win with it. It is taken by Reggie Cobb. Cobb out to the 20. Has a hole. 30. 35. Could break it. No. Had a couple of others. He had to get by. He couldn't maneuver past him. And he is down at the 43-yard line. 35 yards on the kickoff return. We'll be back with the Jets on offense to see if they can tie it up in a moment. This is the NFL on NBC. 
NBC. Welcome back to the Meadowlands. I'm at the 50-yard line, normally the best seat in the house. Where is everybody? This could be the lowest crowd for any Jets game in the history of Giants Stadium. The record is 21,000 for a game at the end of the Joe Walton era in 89. We may break that dubious record today. Charlie, Randy, come on down. You look so lonely. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Jets from their own 43-yard line. Frank Reich is the quarterback. Hands off to Adrian Morrell. In case you are just joining us now, Neil O'Donnell is not playing for the New York Jets, did not start, and Randy has that story. Well, you know, Charlie, he was out earlier warming up, trying to test his footing and whatnot. Team came out in pads for the warm-ups. He's in the far end zone, just throwing passes, drops back, and, and tells his quarterback coach, Ron Earhart, an offensive coordinator, that something just popped. Something went in his calf. They're calling it a pulled calf muscle, but psychologically a big blow for this Jets team. They were really looking forward to getting him back. Second down and seven. They show three wide receivers on this set. And it's Morrell. Adrian Morrell getting the call again. And is still going to have five yards to go on the next play as we go to Greg Gumbel for an update. All right, Charlie, at Mile High Stadium in Denver, the Broncos on the board first from the one-yard line. John Elway to his favorite target, Shannon Sharp, at the back of the end zone for the touchdown and a 7-0 lead. But the Seahawks are inside the Denver 15 as we speak in the first quarter, Charlie. Ah, but don't worry, Greg. This is the year of the Broncos. You can count on it. And right now, it is the year of the wind and the rain at the Meadowlands. And Frank Reich is the quarterback for the Jets, and he faces a third down. Going five receivers from the shotgun. And the pass is caught. A sliding grab by Wesley Slaughter, who returns still bothered by that hamstring injury, and he picks up 10 yards on the play. Well, look at the way he does it, though, Charlie. I mean, Frank Reich puts this ball, lays it out there. He just cradles not only with his hands, his entire body. Both hands on the ball. That is the theme if you're an offensive player. The only person that has any business having one hand on the ball at any time they're handling it today is the quarterback. Even the center should put both hands on the ball to snap it today. First down at the Houston 41-yard line. And back to Adrian Morrell. He's going to pick up a couple. That'll be it. As he goes to the 39-yard line. So it's second down and eight. Baron Wortham making the tackle. Yeah, one thing we'll see too, Charlie, for Richie Kotite's offense when it's going in this direction, as you notice on that pass of Frank Rice, that the ball kind of fluttered and the point was going all over the place. You'll see that when the play when the plays are going from right to left offensively. When that wind's blowing left to right, you get your spirals and your pretty passes. It's it's ugly ball time for the Jets in this quarter and then later on probably in the fourth quarter. The scoreboard ticker just passing by to give you the finals on the early game going today in the NFL. And here the Oilers lead 7-0. Right on target to Keyshawn Johnson and right through his hand. He's going to get a round of booze because he's been complaining to the coaches and the press that the Jets have not been going to him early on. Well, Chris Dishman had the coverage. He's been complaining to the Oilers that he doesn't get enough coverage, and that's a matchup we'll be watching all afternoon. But Reich was right on target, and he should have had that one. So it's third down and eight at the 39-yard line. And Keyshawn goes wide to the far side, showing four wide receivers, but in a tight formation. And Cravat, who is the key third down receiver in the National Football League, he flares out over to the right. They're looking for him, but Reich is out of time. Cravat was picked up, could not get loose. And Reich draws the sack. And the Jets will have to kick it away. Henry Ford got it. Hey, yeah, really, Charlie, this is a formation, a good formation. Being as tight as they are, that's to discourage the blitz. And the coverage down the field sets this up completely. I mean, this is all done by the coverage. Michael Barrow got in there and sort of body, body checked Reich. And then just to get finish, finished off at the end, Robert Young comes in there. So Brian Hansen will kick it away to Mel Gray. Gray moves over, stays away from it. Doesn't want to fool with that one. Takes an oiler bounce. It goes out of bounds at about the 16-yard line. With 45 seconds left to go in the first quarter, the Oilers have the ball. And the Oilers is Steve McNair. He told us yesterday that he's been to New York City only four times. The last time was December a couple of years ago when he was third in the Heisman Trophy. Well, at least on this appearance, he's off to a pretty
pretty good start. On that last touchdown drive, the only touchdown drive for the Oilers, 3 of 4 for 40 yards, and he comes out throwing it by some time. He goes deep, has a man wide open at Sanders, who gets behind everybody. He's to the 20, the 15, the 10. He is going to score. And Steve McNair, his second touchdown pass of the ball game. this one for 83 yards to Chris Sanders. Wow. I mean, Richie Kotite knew coming in, when this guy moves around is when he's the most dangerous. But when he gets the receiver, put this kind of move on Coleman. Look at Sanders. Chomp. I mean, that is, if, if you're fishing, that is not a, a hook in the fish's lip. The fish just swallowed it down to the, the middle of his stomach. I mean, a great move by Sanders. A perfect pass by McNair and a nightmare start for Richie Kotite and his Jets. And you wonder about the arm of Steve McNair? Well, we asked him. He said, you know, what have you ever done flat-footed? Well, he said, and you saw Chris at the long end of a throw from Steve McNair. He said, flat-footed? Uh, I can throw it 75 yards. Ought to be young again. point it is good the Houston Oilers go up by a score of 14 to nothing over the Jets and Randy the reaction of Air McNair kind of like the last one doesn't it just he's a little more excited because this one went a whole lot farther coordinator tell Marcus Coleman you know look black you're a rookie and in the last time you're going to be beat but that is a highlight film type of move put on by Chris Sanders on Coleman Coleman is a young guy. He's got to remember that and putting that in the computer banks, but I know it hurts a lot right now because that was wonderful. Al Del Greco kicking away, taken by one of the up backs, and that's a tight end. Cal Brady on the return across the 35 to around the 36-yard line. Rafael Robinson with the tackle after an eight-yard return. And Randy, there's their scoring drive. Well, that was a long one, wasn't it? Took him a long time to go that uh, 11 seconds. <laughs> one play, 83 yards. And, uh, you know, one thing I miss about games like this, in a place like this, though, you know, look at Jeff Fisher. He's wet. He's been, he's soaking now. He hasn't been him on the field for a half a game. This turf, there's nothing to this AstroTurf. Why are you doing AstroTurf a slide? You don't get dirty. You don't have fun. There's no mud and muck and all kinds of other stuff. It just, you sort of get cold and embarrassed if you're a Jet right now. First down for the Jets. Keyshawn Johnson in motion across the back of the line. And they do Morell has dropped for a loss of a couple of yards. And in the rain, the Jets are going to have to throw the ball if they're going to do anything against the Oilers. Baron Wortham making the tackle for Houston. We had a chance to talk to him yesterday. They called him, he might be called him the juice man. He always carries a little jug of cranberry juice or Gatorade or even water sometimes just with him all the time. Oh, he's, he's, get, he's getting his liquids externally today. <laughs> and, the, and with that play, we come to the end of the first quarter with the Houston Oilers on top of the New York Jets by a score of 14 to nothing. Back to the second period in a moment. The rain for us here at the Meadowlands. Jeff Fisher, the head coach of the Oilers, 154 total yards per spear to the Jets, 43. Those numbers reflecting the score. Houston up by two touchdowns and two extra points. And this is a little behind. Wayne Corbett normally catches that. Slipped through his hands, hit his shoulder pad, and pop loose. Lenoy Jones, the rookie free agent from TCU, had the coverage on him. And normally this is a pass that he would catch, but you can see in the rain and the gloves. It's a little bit more difficult now, Randy. Well, what really is the most difficult part, though, Charlie, when you get in bad weather like this, a quarterback has got to put the ball on the numbers as it's moving. Makes it a lot more difficult on a quarterback calling for that kind of accuracy. But, you know, receivers like Keyshawn Johnson's had one slide through him. Now Wayne Corbett was thrown kind of half behind him. He couldn't get it. you got to keep it within the frame of the numbers. Five wide receivers on third down and 12. And again, the Oilers counter with only a four-man rush. And they pick everybody else up downfield on the coverage. And this one is almost picked up. Here's a, a battle for it for a gain of maybe three or four yards. Lee Cole had the coverage on Alex Van Dyke. And the Jets will come in and they'll kick it away again. Well, what, was our, what was your favorite term as a little kid playing baseball? You know, tie goes to the runner. Well, you know, the dual possession goes to the offensive guy. And Van Dyke had a, as good a grip on that one as Cole did, but goes to the offense. Well, Brian Hansen will be kicking. And there is Mel Gray out of Purdue some 11 years ago. Premier return man for the Houston Oilers. Good snap, pretty good catch. And it's sailed. Steps away from it, the four-yard line. A very wise decision by Mel Gray. The ball goes through the end.
end zone for the touchback will bring it out to the 20 yard line. 59 yards on the kick by Brian Hansen. Uh, this is one of those days if you're a punter, though, after the first quarter, if you're going left to right, you're all impressed with the stats you got going on, how far you're punting the ball, but wait till you turn around and go the other way. And here is Steve McNair, who has already thrown for two touchdowns in the ballgame. The New York Jets have had a problem this year defensively of giving up the big play. That's the 20 plus yards. And they have given up 59 prior to this ballgame. Now the league average is 36. They've given up 59 already. They've given up two big plays in this ballgame of more than 20 yards. So they continue to lead uh, that negative category. And it's the first down. That's on the ground for the Orleans. Well, there's not a lot there. Eddie George is stopped right about the line of scrimmage by Hugh Douglas. He really, the challenge for the Houston Oilers in this game going against the Jets is, you know, the Jets have a lot of things that go bad against them. Houston has to create things to go bad for especially the Jets' defense. And Jim Baccarelli right there, their defensive coordinator. You saw one already by that great move that Chris Sanders put on. That is an offense creating something bad. And this offense has got so much skill, they can create a lot of bad things to happen. Derek Russell checks into the offensive set as a wide receiver. And on second down and nine, Houston with three wide receivers. But again, it is Eddie George who gets the call. You're carried near the 25-yard line, so it'll be third down and five. Bobby Hamilton with the tackle. You know, one thing you'll hear more than anything else, we talked already about the, the crowd not being uh, real big. Houston's used to that. They don't play in front of very many people there at the Astrodome, but you hear a lot of squeaking. You get the audio, you hear it squeak, squeak, squeak. That's all the shoes. That's rubber on rubber. That's AstroTurf on the bottom of the soles of those feet. Third down and five. The rain continues. The wind is swirling just a little bit, but not uh, when you notice the top of the goalpost, that's uh, the uprights. That's what you look for to give an indication of where it is at ground level. And that's an indication that uh, the officials are trying to protect <laughs> the ball for the rain. And as Randy pointed out earlier, it doesn't make any difference. The ball gets wet. And we've got a timeout call. That stops the clock. 12.40. Time remaining. We're in the first half. And the Houston Oilers are up 14 and nothing on the job. The most protection against volatility burn off. And by Enterprise Rent a Car. Call 1 800 Rent a Car. Pick Enterprise. We'll pick you up. Along with a letter to Santa Claus, this is Charlie Jones and Randy Cross, the Oilers. Third down and five, and they are three for three, third down opportunity. And McNair to throw. As pressure, he throws this away. One thing about it, when he throws it away, there is no question that he is throwing it away. First row, Charlie. First row, and there's a good-sized wall here at Giant Stadium. The, the Jets did what they did to this young man last year when he started against him on this play. They blitzed them. Last year when the Jets played against McNair down in Houston, out of about 60 offensive plays, they blitzed him about 58 plays. They just forced him to make quick decisions. That's exactly what they did there. And Reggie Roby with his first punt of the ball game. Wayne Corbett is the return man. Uh, yesterday I asked Wayne, what are you thinking about at this moment? And he, he said, I just want to catch the ball. That's all. I'll worry about other things after I can catch it. This one is going to sail. He backs up. He has it. Jungle gets it in hand. Has a grip, and then he is clothesline. Oh, oh. Is he nailed by Terry Killens, the rookie from Penn State? 40 yards on the kick. A seven-yard return, and the Jets have the football. Next Saturday at 12 noon Eastern time, 3 p.m. Pacific, Johnny Miller joins golf legends Jack Nicklaus, Lee Trevino, Raymond Floyd, and others as they team up with their sons in the Office Depot Father-Son Challenge. That's the Office Depot Father-Son Challenge next Saturday here on NBC. Well, right now the challenge is outdoors in the rain, and the challenge to the Jets as they trail the Houston Oilers by a score of 14 to nothing as the Jets start at their own 41-yard line. And they show they show Keyshawn in a slot on the right side. They come out throwing nice spin move by Keyshawn Johnson. Ball popped out of his chest. He is now all for two. Two opportunities yet to make a catch. Baron Wortham had 
the coverage for the Houston Oilers. And a round of booze greeting Keyshawn's performance. Well, you know, Charlie, both times we've seen him go to Keyshawn, he's been open, a nice job working against Wortham to sort of get the little push off, get in an area where he gets the ball, and you've got to come down with those when you're open, and they make the effort early. And as a pro, I, I, you know, I tell you, you don't lose interest late. And Richie Coates, I'm sure, made that point to Keyshawn. You, you have your interest early, in the middle, and at the end. Adrian Morrell sliding down, making his reads as he goes to, to the left side and then was shut off. He's going to pick up a yard, maybe two. Michael Barrow stops him for the Oilers. Well, the critical thing here for, for Frank Reich in this offense is to get a first down. Get some sort of momentum. Get some semblance of a roll going. Remember, this is not an inept offense the Houston defense is facing. You know, this offense... For the, New York, for the New York Jets is one of the top rated offenses in the NFL because they have thrown the ball so successfully and have got a running back like Morrell. But right now they are being stuck. Five wide receivers is third down and eight. He looks for number 80, Krebet. That's who Reich is looking for. Now he's out of time. He can run for it. He has his eyes set on the marker and has it by a yard. He wins a foot race to the far side. Nice play for Frank Reich. Joe Bowden was chasing him, but had no shot at catching him. He runs for 10. He needed eight. He's got the first down. Might be the spark the Jets need. Well, well, exactly how he did it, Charlie. They rushed three guys, dropped everybody off in his own. Frank Reich saw that, and as soon as he recognized there wasn't going to be anybody open, he just, he took an easy. That was a gift. I mean, that's just like laying out there and saying, here, have eight, nine yards. Three wide receivers on the set, first down. Gets at the Houston 47-yard line. Houston up 14-0. Sideline pass is right there, and it has gone along the sideline. Nice grab by Webster Slaughter. That is his second reception of the ball game. This one good for 12 yards, and back-to-back -back first downs for the Jets. Well, you know, Frank Wright gets something going with a scramble, and right there he's got the win going in his direction. He's got a chance to work with Webster Slaughter. You mentioned the hamstring's been out for a while, still bothering him a little. But that was exactly how you do it. You catch it, and do you get both feet in? Uh, I don't know about that. I think that was kind of a, what do they call that in NBA? Continuation? That was a give. Thus far, a flag is not flown. No penalties in the ball game. And on the knees, this is Webster Slaughter with his third reception of the game. This one at the 30-yard line. To add five yards to his total, it'll be second down and five. Steve Jackson was immediately on top of him. Slaughter, three for 27. And we've seen a lot of quick stuff out of this New York Jets passing game. It's exactly what they need to do. They need to go to the quick stuff, hold on to the ball with two hands, and we've already seen tackling can be difficult on a moving object. The Jets' defense has had a hard time tackling the Oilers. Two tight ends, three wide receivers, one remaining back. Like the quarterback. Goes deep, has a man open, and his key shot. Does he finally hold on to what he does? Well, at least he caught their interest. And is the third pass thrown to him, and he has this one. Well, he doesn't need to keep his interest. He just needs a hard one, Charlie. Those, those easy ones near him, anybody can catch those. But you got to be a you know, number one pick in the draft and whatnot to make things kind of in interesting. A little contact there from Marcus Robertson. You know, the ball's hanging a little. He's got to spin the body. He's got to come back. I'd say, yeah, he's interested. 24 yards on the play, 7-yard line, is first down and goal to go. Right now, 7 of 10 for 74 yards in the ball game. And remember, he came out not expecting to play at all. A little flare, we got whistle sounding, we got the ball spiked. It was spiked by Webster Slaughter, but you have the feeling that the play had been stopped. Offense, 5 yards, still first down. That's the first penalty of the ball game. Uh, a bad time for Richie's offense to take too much time and let that play clock run out. They, they had, I think, the defense they wanted, and they had the matchups they wanted with those little quick slants. They're keeping on doing it. That's what they need to do, just get the ball quick to their receivers. Had a real trouble with timeout maintenance and clock maintenance on this football team, Charlie. We've done a lot of games for jet games. We've seen a lot of that, a lot of wasted timeouts. About the ball at the 12, seventh play of the drive. First down, goal to go. Keyshawn in motion. Pump fake. Keyshawn can't put it in. Joe, he's had four headed in his direction.
action. He's caught one of them. Raphael Robinson had the coverage on him. So it's going to be second down and goal to go. It, it might sound a little strange, Charlie, but in this kind of weather and the ball's wet, you got to concentrate on the front end of the ball. Catch the front end. And, and the front end of the ball is just out of Keyshawn's reach. So yeah, it's a nice job just getting the, the subtle little push off right there at the end. See the subtle little push off. And by the time he gets the hands up, all he sees is the back of the ball. Second and go. Right into the corner. And <laughs> no chance for Kyle Brady. The defense had shut him off completely. He had no opportunity to get to the ball. It's going to be third down and goal to go. Chris Dishman and Baron Wortham had the double coverage on him. And down 14 to nothing. You got to figure in the rain, playing only for pride. While well, the Oilers are playing for a playoff spot right now, playoff is leading Pride 14 to nothing. You're in four down territory. But first things first, third down goal to go 12 yard line. And here's Keyshawn moving across in motion, and he cuts downfield. Frank Reich simply ran out of time on that one. Well, you know, he, he put it ball, that, that ball there, Charlie, where, where nobody could get to it. His guy or the other guy. Watch the pocket. Or, or soon to be lack thereof. This is only a four-man rush. And this is all created by the fact there's such good zone coverage. Jeff Fisher is showing Ron Earhart and Frank Reich a lot of four-man rush and seven-man zone coverage behind it. And for the Jets, they obviously do not agree with my thinking on it being four down territory. They said, no, it's three down territory. And Nick Lowry now will go with a 30-yard field goal attempt. The Jets just want to get on the board. Snap comes with one second. And Lowry sails it just inside the right upright. So the Jets have three. The Oilers have 14. And we'll be back with a kickoff in a moment. It's Domino's Pizza by halftime. For Hot and Wow, call Domino's now. And the rain continues in the Meadowlands, along with Lynn Berman. This is Charlie Jones and Randy Cross. As Don Silvestri will kick it away for the New York Jets. First opportunity he has had to kick the ball. Mel Gray and Ronnie Harmon are the deep backs on the return. And the wind swirling still just a bit, but not as bad as everyone thought, with the gust predicted above 45 to 50 miles an hour. And here we go. And he sails a beauty. Taken at the four-yard line by Mel Gray. Gray kind of searching for a hole up the middle, does not find it. He returns to about the 25-yard line and will return in just a moment after that 21-yard return. Oilers are up 14 to 3. We get to December and you have the rain. We're in maybe some snow. We're not going to have snow here today, though, because the temperature is in the mid-50s. It's a little bit warm uh, to have snow, although it, uh, it has been lurking west of us and moving across the top of the country. But when you get this time of the year, you start thinking about the playoffs. Well, the Houston Oilers, they are one of the four or five teams that are on the bubble. If they rub the table and win their last four ball games, they could well make the playoffs, and they just might do that. And here their work is cut out for them against the Jets, and they continue to move the ball offensively. This time the give is to Ronnie Harmon, and he is stopped by Gary Jones. You know, Charlie, we, we were looking at the playoff formula earlier before, they, and that thing's like three or four pages long. And I mean, you, you almost, you know, need a physicist to figure out some of the combinations, or at least a, a high-tech mathematician to figure out all the numbers. The simplest formula when you look at the standings of the NFL and your teams in the six, seven range, win your game. Get to ten wins, you're going to be in the playoffs. Second down and five. Oilers come into the ball game with a record of six and six after a great start. And then slipping up the last two games. And the first down. Better to do Eddie George. So the Oilers have a first down. Now Houston with this game here against uh, the New York Jets. And then the run of the table, they have Jacksonville, Cincinnati, and Baltimore, all of which are very beatable teams. Randy? Well, hey, watch Eddie George come right through this hole right here. I mean, this is just an example of good offensive line blocking up front. Watch the green jerseys. Watch the cutback. See the combination brought block inside where Donnelly was working over there with Irv Eatman. I mean, that is exactly, exactly what Eddie George needs to see. If he sees air, he's going to get yards. First down, Houston 41-yard line. Not that much air there for Eddie George. Ronnie Harmon is the lead blocker. Bobby Hamilton drops him maybe one. 
maybe no gain. We'll call it second down and ten. Check of the clock shows the six minutes, 39 seconds and counting. Time remaining. We're in the first half. The Oilers striking two touchdown passes from Steve McNair. The first one to Frank Wycheck of 23 yards and the second one to Chris Sanders of 83 yards. And that is the longest offensive play of the year for the Houston Oilers. simply whether or not he does not drop it. He has that 90% of the time. Well, well, also he has about 90% of what's open field in front of him, in front of him if he catches this thing. There is going to be all kinds of room for a guy with his speed to run around and get away from Gary Jones. We saw the safety 25 start to come up. That might have been six points if he catches it. He looked at it, he saw it, he caught the back half and it kept going. Maybe he needs a windshield wiper on that visor of his. It might have picked up some raindrops that bothered him. I mean, there he wants to go deep. But fake, he can run the ball. Got from behind, but his momentum will carry him for the first down. And that was third down and ten as he converts. Twelve yards on the play. Hugh Douglas tracking him from behind brought him down. But Steve McNair, who is tall and strong and... One of the best athletes in the National Football League, and watch him here, and you can see his athletic ability at work. Well, I mean, Hugh Douglas missed him the first time. You talk about some athletic ability and speed. Douglas retracts him down all the way from the backside to get it. But that's the part that Steve McNair adds to an offense. That's what's going to make this guy a tear around the league real soon. And he converts on third down and ten. Back to throw on first down is pressure. There's the screen and tipped away. Bobby Hamilton went up to just deflect it. Ronnie Harmon was working behind the screen. Could not get the ball to him. As at home, you have a chance to check the ticker. Oakland leading Miami. Denver up by 10 over Seattle and other games that are going on. These being what we call the late game. St. Louis is trailing New Orleans. They're in the second quarter in that ball game. And, of course, here, the score of the Houston Oilers 14, the New York Jets 3. McNair has completed four of eight for 123 yards and two touchdowns. And he faces the second down and ten. Comes out firing, pass is complete to Chris Sanders. He's going to be wrapped up at about the 40-yard line. They may give him the 39. Marcus Coleman was there for the Jets. Well, you saw that great double move he put on earlier today on Marcus Coleman. Uh, not much of a move there. Just sort of throw it out there, give him the ball, then let him make moves. And when you make moves, you try to get a reaction. You're trying to get a defensive back to, to bite on it. So you can go the other way. There's the moves. The only bite comes from about three or four other guys in green jerseys trying to bring Chris Sanders down. So mark it third down and two. Just outside the 39-yard line of the Jets. Eighth play of the drive for the Oilers. So they have struck 83 yards in one play. Here's a quarterback sneak. Trying to figure the first down, and McNair should be successful. And we've seen them also put together 71-yard drive and 11 plays. And now they have another one going for them. The perfect place to sneak right there if you're McNair, because you know you've got that leg strength, and Jeff Fisher really considers that quite a play. I mean, that's part of the arsenal is sneaking McNair, but you've got Stefanoski who's been an all-pro. you got Bruce Matthews on that left side, exactly where he went over that time, who seems like he's kind of played forever, now holds the all-time record for the Houston Oilers in games played. So, you know, go to the comfort zone, and that's to your left. That 35-yard line, first down for Houston. Eddie George has the opening, and he'll score. Oh, a little fake to the outside. The hole was open by the left side of the line. With a great vision, he came back inside, popped her loose, 35 yards, and the touchdown. Uh, you remember what I said a little while ago, Charlie? If you show George air, he's going to get yards. Watch the middle of this defense for the Jets. Donnelly turns out. Stepnowski gets a nice block on, on Brock, and that's nothing but air. And the only thing really in dark green is a tarp around the stadium once he gets past that. See the blocking right there? The Stepnowski on Brock, and see you later. Bye. Al Del Greco will now attempt the extra point. Houston leads it now 20 to 3. Make that 21 to 3. The extra point is good. We have 3.48 left to go in the first half. Back with a kickoff in a moment. Third time in the ballgame is a Jets defense have given up a big play. That's 
a play of 20 or more yards. They lead the league in that negative category. And they now have given up 62. And it's finally picked up by Reggie Cobb. Cobb is going to be wrapped up at about the 17-yard line. Nine yards on the return. Next Sunday, NBC Sports presents more exciting NFL action at 12 noon Eastern for the NFL on NBC. The most of you will see an AFC East matchup as Drew Bledsoe and the Patriots host these Jets. And some of you will see Brett Favre and the Packers battle John Elway and the Broncos. Others will see the Oilers square off against the Jaguars. That's NFL on NBC next Sunday starting at 12 noon Eastern time. So the Jets will start from their own 18-yard line. The balloon can go in every single direction in this kind of a place. Four wide receivers. The Jets come out throwing. Far side, wide open underneath the coverage is Alex Van Dyke. And that is his 12th reception on the year. If it stands up, it is not going to. It'll be a penalty against the Jets that'll bring it back. Steve Jackson making the tackle. Yeah, it's going to be a hand up in the face against one of the offensive linemen, Charlie. Mm -hmm. Illegal hands to the face. Number 96 of the defense. Five yards. First down. No, it is against the defense, so they'll take the penalty. But the catch still does not count as they take the penalty. Second flag that we've had in the rain. Now the toughest thing right now for Richie Kotite and his offense is I don't think they're getting the attacking Houston off defense they expected. Def they're playing a lot of zone and they're playing soft. They're showing blitz here. Robert shows first and five. The chain throw first and ten at the 22-yard line. You just have the feeling that if the Jets are going to get back in this at all, they've got to come with three or four, with four of their five wide, both of those sets and move the ball without a huddle, and here they go. With their hurry of offense, 256 and counting, and they show five wide receivers. This has been countering with four defensive linemen, and they drop back the cover. So the Jets got near as successful against this kind of a defense as they have been earlier, in a diving grab, and it's incomplete. Keyshawn Johnson couldn't pull it in. Dishman had the coverage, and that's the matchup right there that we talked about earlier. Both of them complaining they're not getting enough action, and so they're going to be on each other. But what you're going to get here is you're going to get some mismatches. This is not a mismatch. Keyshawn Johnson working against Dishman is not a mismatch. It turns into one if the receiver continues to drop the ball. What you're looking for here, though, is you're looking for a receiver or a running back matched on a linebacker. Third down and seven at the 25-yard line. Reich has good protection. The bet drops it. And notice Wayne has taken his gloves off. He had gloves on earlier, and he couldn't pull it in. And this time it was third down. He is a key man for the Jets. Leads the NFL in third down reception for first downs with 25 coming into the ball game, And so the Jets unable to pick up the first down, and Brian Hansen will kick it away. Yeah, really, at this point, Charlie, 21-3 to three with, with 2.38 to left to go in the second quarter. The biggest challenge this Jets staff, I think, is to keep this Jet team interested. Not just Keyshawn. Keep the whole team interested in the game and playing like it. Now Gray is the return man, and he takes it to the 35-yard line and is spun under at the 41. So he'll have six yards on the return following that 40-yard kick. Eric Zomov had the coverage on the special teams for the New York Jets. So 2.29 left to go here in the second. And you look along the sidelines and a little bit more animation you can see on the Houston Oilers sideline. And not so many all bundled up as we check the ticker as it moves past us. Final in overtime, Indianapolis winning that ball game. Baltimore big over Pittsburgh. Maybe one of the big surprises of the weekend. Right. Green Bay over Chicago is expected. Well, especially when you consider, you know, Pittsburgh and Buffalo were sort of in a, a death match about who's going to be that number two team at that weekend off in the playoffs. What do they do? They both lose. Eddie George slides through from the 41-yard line out to about the 48-yard line. Gary Jones with the tackle for the Jets. And right now, physically, Eddie George and this offense are taking it to the Jets' defense. You got some cheerleading going on within the Jets' huddle over there on defense, but they need to start putting the helmets in the middle of bodies because right now all they're catching are edges, and they're not catching much of an edge on Eddie George. And now 
Now the two-minute warning will be given to both benches. We'll step aside for two minutes ourselves, and we'll be back to the metal end. Greg Gumbel is there with Mike Ditka, Joe Gibbs, Chris Collinsworth. Scores and highlights not only of the late games, but also some of the upsets that took place during... <laughs> There's a couple upsets for I think they're going to make a special appearance at halftime. <laughs> that, that is the great Karnak on the near side. And the question is, here is a... Here's a Houston order. Eddie George loses the ball. The ball is still loose. Jets come up with it, and the Jets have a break. Matt Brock comes up with the football off of the fumble of Eddie George. Well, not only did George fumble that ball, McNair came away from the center, didn't have much of a handle on it when he got it. Watch him take the snap. He's bobbling. He gives it to him. Remember two hands on the ball? The ball never got above the thigh pads of George. He never really got a handle on that and was trying to make a cut. Watch the ball in his waist. He's trying to make a cut and handle the ball. Soaking wet and it's gone. And on a day like this, you expect more turnovers than we've had. How many have we had? Well, that's the first one. And the Jets have a huge break at the 41-yard line of the Oilers. And they still have plenty of time. Right throwing very quickly, and it is caught and out of bounds is Webster Slaughter. Four reception now in the ball game for Webster Slaughter. He had only 17 on the year coming in. And he has made key catches all afternoon. Four for 36. And what Ron Earhart and the offense are doing, I kept talking about these short passes, but if you're not being attacked and they're dropping in zones, you're, you really are, are relegated to the old taking what they're giving you. And right now they're giving the little short passes off into the flat, and that's what Reich has taken. Second down and one. Five wide receivers. Again, a four-man rush over the middle, and it's dropped. And coming up limping a bit is Webster Slaughter. Now watch him on the near side. And now remember also that he's been bothered by a hamstring recently. And this is his first time back in a while. It's a wet, cold afternoon. Not terribly cold, but it is cold enough to bother him. As Randy will give you the call here. Well, well, the problem here, Charlie, isn't so much for a receiver. See the tug at the back of Webster Slaughter's jersey? Coaches hate that to happen in practice. Because that slows the receiver up and the whole body moves, the speed changes, and that's when muscles get popped. Well, wide receiver right with a quarterback move. You know, he says, Steve McNair, if you can do it, the old man can do it too. Reich is in his 12th year in the National Football League. They'll stop the clock with a timeout, and we'll step aside. 142 left to go. First half. Don't go away. Oilers up 21-3. for the Jet offense. Don't make a dumb mistake because you're in a hurry saving time. Jets have three timeouts remaining. Oilers have two in the first half. He goes in the corner, overthrows everybody. Hoping that Alex Van Dyke could outrun the secondary. Well, what he was getting there, Charlie, finally he got a blitz. Finally he got man coverage outside, and, and that's what he saw. I mean, he, but he had to get that ball up there and float it up there fast because otherwise he was going to have to eat it. Watch the coverage as the ball is snapped. Here comes the blitz. There's the man outside. Perfect matchup. If you have the time, it's an easy six. He didn't have the time. And it was Lee Cole, the rookie free agent from Arizona, who's been burned once in the ball game. And he was the man who had the coverage there. 117 left. Oilers in the neutral zone. This will be a free play. And it's dropped incomplete. Van Dyke, the intended receiver. But the play, the penalty should go against Houston. Offside, defense, number 96. That's Gary Walker, Walker, the left tackle. You know, Charlie, the Oilers' second penalty of the ballgame. You haven't seen that many flags, but the ones we've seen have been crucial. You talked about Jeff Fisher working the officials. This is the situation where an, a, a, a coach works the official asking for a head bomb. 
A guy like Frank Wright gives that big of a hit on account, that much of an inflection. A defensive coach with Fisher's background is trying to tell the official he's moving his head. That's why my guys are going. So they'll spot the ball at the 18-yard line, and it's a first down. 1.15, time remaining in the second quarter. Again, the shotgun. Right again, protection. There's Keyshawn, and he has it in the corner. Simply slipped away from the defender. The defender let him go. He thought he had deep help. He did not have it. And it was Dishman, I believe. We'll check it out to make sure. 18 yards and the touchdown. You see Dishman right there, and he's saying, that's one on me, guys. That's one on me. Because it was clearly a blitz inside that turned into man coverage. There's man. There's a slip and a bite. You saw the rookie Coleman take a bite. There goes to show you that uh, even a veteran like Dishman, one of the better man-covered corners in the league, can also take a bite out of a route every once in a while and get burned. And for Keyshawn Johnson, that is his sixth touchdown of the year. Six times in the ballgame they have he's gone to him, and he has two receptions, including the touchdown. Two reception for 44 yards, and the score goes to Houston 21 and the New York Jets 10. Very important for Frank Reich and Keyshawn Johnson in this offense to get these kind of points, especially this way. They didn't have to struggle. They didn't have to fight. The other team made the big play that allowed the big play. They weren't the team making the mistake, and they put the points on the board. And again, remember, it was set up. You, all coaches will tell you that turnovers will kill you. Well, it just killed the Houston Oilers for seven points on the first turnover of the ball game. On the fumble, that was recovered by Matt Brock of the Jets, and that set up the short touchdown drive of 41 yards. You know, Charlie, remember earlier we talked about the continuation on that sideline route that, you know, sort of gave him the, the, the carryover in football where, oh, gee, he would have got that other foot down in or, you know, it's not really palming the basketball. I think Keyshawn got a break there because I'm not sure he got that second foot in after he had possession for that six points. Watch the very end here. Watch as the ball drops in. When does he have it? One. I don't know about that one. I got to say, uh, like I said, a little continuation. I think he got a break. Don Silvestri now will kick it away for the New York Jets. 41-yard drive in six plays, and it took 42 seconds following the fumble recovery. This one, they sent it slide all the way through to Mel Gray. That's what he's there for, and he goes sliding down around the 28-yard line. His momentum will carry him on the slip and slide to the 26, and there the Oilers will have a first down with just over a minute to go. 21 yards on the return by number 21, Mel Gray. Uh, they both had two timeouts here, Charlie, and, and what a great time to to get a little more training for your young quarterback McNair. A minute and two, a minute and two seconds, a minute and four seconds is a lot of time in the NFL. Jeff Fisher knows that. You know, he's had the opportunity to watch Marino mark, march the ball down the field earlier on him. Now it's a matter of how much of that two-minute offense McNair has really absorbed. A pair of running backs, actually a running back and an ace back, and two wide receivers. And let's see how successful Eddie George can be on the ground. Well, he's been successful thus far, and he picks up nine yards here before Victor Green makes the tackle at the 35-yard line. So it'll be second down and one, but the Oilers not in a, in a big hurry here. George now in the first half has already rushed for 92 yards in 14 carries. And, of course, he does have that touchdown of 35 yards. And that'll really be the key in the second half because they're obviously here going to kind of drop on the ball. But the key is going to be how much they give the ball to George, which I say is going to be an awful lot. And now the orders will just kneel down and take the count. And that will be it as both of the teams will head to the locker room. The rain continues to fall, but in reality now it's no more than a heavy drizzle. So it should be an interesting second half. Can the Jets come back, Randy? Oh, I think they can, Charlie. I mean, big plays, though. They need help from Houston. Houston's got to make the mistakes like that last play by Dishman that lets them score. So at halftime, the score, the Houston Oilers 21 and the New York Jets 10. It's halftime, and that means it's time to go to Greg Gumbel and New York.